You do not want to miss this one. We're going to be breaking down the CBDC vote that happened yesterday in D.C. Also taking a look at a number of clips that will give you some alignment at to, as to what the future of CBDCs here in the United States might look like. We're going to break all that down for you. It's going to be a good one. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Before we get started, I want to thank our sponsor. That's Tangem. And this is all about self-custody. When you think about CBDCs, you got to think about self-custody. Check out Tangem.com. You can learn a little bit more about their wallet. Uh, they do slim as a bank card, secure as a bank vault. Store, buy, earn, transfer, and swap thousands of coins and tokens. If you want to use their card, you can do so with two different types. You can get the classic wallet, or you can get this new Tangem wallet that is a new type of card that's going to give you optional seed phrases. Uh, you can order these in three card packs, so it's very easy. I would suggest doing that. Spend a little bit extra for that. Use our discount code to help kind of... Um, you know, soften the blow there. But it's a great value. Check it out. We'll leave a link down below. Uh, it does help the channel out. Let's get into a couple of the things that uh, happened yesterday. The two I want to focus on are these right here, the Power of the Mint Act, and then also the CBDC Anti-Surveillance State Act. These were the two that were focused on primarily. And I want to go to an intro clip real quick to give you kind of a framework of how this all started there in D.C. Listen in. Today, we'll consider a slate of uh, legislation to bolster our national security, protect Americans' uh, financial privacy, and shield our financial system from the risks associated with a potential central bank digital currency, or CBDC. Unlike decentralized cryptocurrencies, a central bank digital currency is a digital form of sovereign currency that is designed and issued by a government and transacts on a digital ledger that is controlled by that government. If not designed to emulate cash, could give the federal government the ability to surveil and restrict Americans' transactions. This is not just alarming, it's downright un-American. We've already seen examples of governments weaponizing their financial system against their citizens in China. Uh, we need to counter China by being the best version of ourselves. This, this bill expresses that sentiment that, that, yes, we're going to innovate and we're going to lead on blockchain and we're going we're to lead on uh, digital assets, but we're going to do so the American way. And the way we do that is decentralized. We don't do this by centralizing it in a central bank. We can achieve the innovation potential of blockchain and, and uh, the immediacy of, pay, of, of payments and the frictionless payments future with what we did in July. And, and that is to create a regulatory framework for stable coins. All right, so there's some fire in the belly of the lawmakers. I like what I'm hearing so far. This sounds pretty good, but we get into more. And remember, there's always a bad guy. So let's go, maybe girl. We'll go to the next clip with Maxine Waters. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Unfortunately, Republicans are marking up one bill that is not bipartisan. We do know that 130 countries around the world are racing to develop and implement a CBDC. What will happen if CBDCs issued by other central banks gain traction as a preferred method of payment in international trade transactions? Are we comfortable allowing the Chinese yuan or currencies from other countries to overtake the U.S. dollar as a principal global reserve currency? Republicans are making baseless attacks against a CBDC that does not even exist. So with that, I yield back the balance of my time. All right, so Maxine in rare form, uh, I shouldn't say rare, normal form with her. She's, of course, uh, for the idea of CBDCs. Uh, the other thing, a lot of what she said could be applied to stable coins. And what we're seeing around the world, this is the first time I think we are chasing other governments who are actually trying to suppress their citizens. I would kind of be in a position or the camp of not going that direction. I like what I hear them so far, but let's go into our next clip. This is going to be Mr. Sherman. Listen in and allowing the Federal Reserve to continue doing what they're doing, literally recruiting and hiring people in the San Francisco Fed office to build a central bank digital currency is the financial equivalent of allowing the empire from Star Wars 
to build the Death Star, so long as they promise not to turn it on. I am struck by the hypocrisy of the advocates of cryptocurrency. They come in and they say cryptocurrency is wonderful because it's digital and it's high tech and it's innovative. And then they propose a bill which, in the words of the ranking member, is an anti-innovation bill. And they describe the U.S. government as Darth Vader. They describe any attempt to enforce American laws as the action of Darth Vader and the Empire. As Sam Bankman-Fried has demonstrated, crypto is perfect for hiding from your creditors. And while his body may be in jail, his money cannot be found. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Thank you. Uh, I just have some, you know, obviously I'm opposed to this bill, but uh, I just want to know what I'm arguing against. All right. <laughs> Uh, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> what am I going against? I don't even know uh, what I'm going against. All right. Well, the point is, is that Sherman's usually in that kind of position. <laughs> Anti-innovation. I thought that was a, a rare little piece right there. Uh, both these guys are going to go against anything that I think the Republicans, or even to a certain extent, the bipartisan uh, Capitol Hill lawmakers will go when it comes to crypto or anything that is even related to blockchain. Let's get into our next clip. This goes into a little bit more about the unbanked. Listen in. And the idea that this is somehow going to help the unbanked is insane. Because when you ask the unbanked, why are you unbanked? A lot of it is because of surveillance capitalism. A permissionless system would be something more similar to Bitcoin. You could digitize it. And frankly, that's why a lot of people have been drawn in the unbanked and underbanked community to cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. I think one of the speakers for this bill said that people aren't banked because they oppose the quote surveillance state. People aren't banked because they don't have any money. It's amazing. The people who aren't banked are the people who don't have any money. I'd be willing to support this bill if it also ended crypto. Well, that's an interesting statement there. When you go to the FDIC site, this is the 2021 uh, FDIC National Survey of Unbanked and Underbanked Households. Look at some of the data here on this. An estimated 4.5% of U.S. households, approximately 5.9 million, were unbanked. This is 2021, okay? Likelihood of this is much greater. And remember, we have a lot of immigrants in our country that in many cases also are coming from countries who they've seen their banking system maybe not work out so well for them, and they are very, very skeptical. Because of that, some don't have enough money to meet minimum balance requirements, as I cited, but around 21%. But most don't trust banks. It, this was the second most cited main reason for not having an account. Avoiding a bank gives more privacy was the third most cited main reason, 8.4%. Further into the report, this was a piece right here. Who are the unbanked and underbanked? Breaking this out, most is distrust of banks, inconvenient locations, high bank account fees, uh, needed products and services that are not offered by banks, poor credit history, you know, check system, et cetera. Typical challenges I think a lot of people in the unbanked uh, sector face. Let's go to our next clip. I think this is a good one right here. This gets into the privacy side of things. I, I think there's what, 2,000 uh, stable coins that, that are out there right now. None of them, none of them protects the security of, of American citizens' privacy. And when an American citizen puts all their information out in the private sector and it's available to 200 different retailers and banks and, and, and other governments, there is no expectation of privacy. That's our problem here. Uh, some of my colleagues gloss over the fact the whole reason they're collecting the data in the first place is the government makes them collect it. Frankly, if you don't agree to spy on your customers, you don't get to operate a bank in the United States. You don't get to operate a money service business in the United States. Essentially, get permission from the government to act as a financial services institution so long as you spy on your customers. About 350 million pieces of evidence sitting over at the Treasury on private sector activity, these giant, enormous government databases, which have been hacked, both the IRS and others, Office of Personnel Management and others, uh, do present tremendous targeting by bad actors. You know, this is really where it gets into the destruction of personal privacy. And this is the problem that we do face in our society. Some of the countries that are already down this slippery slope, countries like China, 
As an example right here, China's central bank digital currency, this is the uh, digital uh, ID, to deduct fines instantly from your digital wallet if you're caught for speeding or jaywalking by a surveillance system. So right there, this kind of shows the actual crime of jaywalking now portrayed on basically a bulletin board in front of everyone and then of course automatically deducted. These are the kind of invasion capabilities. Talk about you know search and seizure. This is gonna be able to break down the walls of search and seizure and do things within our own economies and within our own uh, society that we would never dream of, especially around the Constitution. This is China right here, super SIM cards now featuring new digital yuan functions. Is this super SIM card right here, it's gonna function as a digital yuan wallet, smart card and ID cards, as the nation's CBDC pilot continues. So this is going on to phones and will make its way into a position where you can no longer utilize because you're gonna have a digital wallet, now your wallet, and you're gonna be able to use this in a way in which you go to a grocery store, you go to any retailer, and you use that as a payment for, uh, form. And that's where they can lock it down. And that's exactly what I think these lawmakers are fighting against. Let's go to our next clip. This will continue to show you a little bit more about this slippery slope of privacy. Look in. Well, my uncle and my cousin helped me get a cell phone that is linked to a Chinese bank card so that I could buy anything. And I have to pass facial recognition identity verification, which is insane because all I want to do is just spend my gift card balance on this debit. I can't believe I'm doing this. I have to open my mouth. Oh my god. Terrifying. Oh. I once again can't buy anything. I think this is the one thing, this is one of those last stands of the American Constitution that we're trying to protect. And this is a very important one. And it still has to go to the House for a vote. So this is just making it through the committee right now. Let's go to our next clip. This gets it talks about CBDCs and their likelihood of foreverness. Listen in. So look, China designed a CBDC to surveil their own people, right? We don't have to do that. We can design a CBDC, the architecture of which is still under development. This is very, very new. We can, we can develop something that will protect consumer privacy, to protect the privacy of American citizens. That's, that, that should be the goal. My concern is that once we build a CBDC, we don't have it today and tomorrow with our current set of regulators. We have it forever. Mr. Lynch previously mentioned that we could build a CBDC with privacy protections. With all due respect, I don't doubt that. My concern is that once a CBDC is built, there will always be the potential for it to be abused regardless of how it's initially formed. And even if our current leaders or angels once rolled out, this will endure well past the time of anyone in the room. It will continue to be influenced and changed by future leaders over the coming decades. I'd like everyone in this room to take a moment and just picture for a moment a politician they dislike the most in their mind. Now imagine that person and all the ill intentions you ascribe to them with the power that comes with a retail CBDC. It should send a shudder down your spine. I know it sends one down mine. And he's exactly right. You, you lay this out, this is done. And it doesn't, even though this administration might put it in a position where they lock down certain aspects of it, this is gonna to get to a point where there will be a complete unraveling because this will eventually, you give them the power, eventually they just take it. And remember, many of these families that are in politics today have been in politics for 50, 60, 70, 80 years. That's right, families that have been in power in many of these states as long as 80 years. Think about that and the future of privacy. I wanna get into this clip uh, talking about Powell and his idea around CBDCs, because this is an important one. Listen in. In my opinion, with all due respect, this bill is an act of breathless stupidity. Breathless stupidity. Well, my colleague in his description of breathless stupidity kind of puts me in a funny position to say I support this bill, but uh, I guess I'm gonna do that. You know, Chair Powell himself has said, he's acknowledged, I guess, that you would, you would say that the legislation 
uh, is, uh, is needed to issue a CBDC. You know, here, when I say act of breathless stupidity, what I heard was, you don't know the power of the dark side. Um, you know, so uh, we don't really need to further explore the power of the dark side. It's evil. We should resist it. The Constitution of the United States is unambiguous. In Article 1, Section 8, grant the only Congress the authority, exclusive authority, to coin money, regulate the value thereof, and a foreign coin. This is not an archaic provision. We're open for interpretation. It's a foundational element of our republic designed to keep such monumental authority, and I emphasize monumental, within the hands of the people's elected representatives. Congress created the Fed, we brought them into this world, and in theory, we could take them out. It is a check on the things they're doing. Yeah, and I think that is the point, is the checks and balances of the American you know, lawmaking system that we have in place. In, in most rights, it is a good system. We're on the brink of losing that greatness, maybe to other countries, maybe to a complete different kind of dark side. But we've got to pay attention, and that's why this is very important. This vote actually got very narrow. It was, I think, 27 to 20. Look how close that was. And that was in the committee version of it. Let's go look at who voted no. Listen in. Those in favor shall signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed shall signify by saying nay. Record a vote is requested. Record a vote being requested. The clerk will call the roll. This is the final uh, vote of our markup. I Ms. Waters. No. Ms. Waters votes no. Mr. Sherman. No. Mr. Sherman votes no. Mr. Meeks. No. Mr. Meeks votes no. Mr. Scott. No. Mr. Scott votes no. Mr. Lynch. No. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Green. Yes. Mr. Green votes no. Mr. Cleaver. No. Mr. Cleaver votes no. Mr. Himes. No. Mr. Himes votes no. Mr. Foster. No. Mr. Foster votes no. Mrs. Beatty. No. Mrs. Beatty votes no. Mr. Vargas. No. Mr. Vargas votes no. Mr. Gottheimer. Mr. Gottheimer votes no. Mr. Gonzalez. Mr. Gonzalez votes no. Mr. Caston. No. Mr. Gaston votes no. Ms. Presley. No. Ms. Presley votes no. Mr. Horsford. Ms. Talib. Ms. Talib votes no. Mr. Torres. Members deserve to have their votes recorded, and the clerk deserves a little bit of respect. Clerk will continue. Mr. Torres. Ms. Garcia. No. Ms. Garcia votes no. Ms. Williams. Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Williams votes no. Mr. Nickel. Mr. Nickel votes no. Ms. Pedersen. Ms. Pedersen votes no. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Mr. Chairman votes aye. Mr. Lucas, Mr. Norman, Mrs. Velasquez, Mr. Horsford, Mr. Torres. Mr. Chairman, on this vote, the ayes are 27 and the nays are 20. 5403 as amended. The bill is uh, ordered favorably to the House. Fending the committee stands adjourned. All right, so there you have it. Hopefully you guys were paying attention because all of those no's need to get a phone call. All of those no's that are out there need to get a phone call today. And the way you're going to do that is go over to standwithcrypto.org. You can actually call your representative. We showed this the other day. And actually, I think we ended up having around 200 people, 100 people that called their representatives through the app based on how we were able to track the clicks. And that's not enough, guys. We need to get thousands of people out there calling and emailing their representatives and letting them know. It's very simple. If you care about crypto, just jump in with your address, go into that. It goes right into the person that is in your district and you can hit call and it will go there. You can suggest, it suggests a, a script for, this was done well. And I mean, Coinbase is, kudos to them for getting this done. This, I think it really helps. And again, again, it does address the FIT21 Act, which is coming out in about a month. So these are the kind of things you've got to be able to make a stand now. This is what is at stake. It is very important guys to get involved if you are in any way, whether you like crypto or not, but you like freedom, if you like that, then this is one of the things that will at least uh, help move the ball forward. All right, last, uh, last clip here I want to get into, which is Maxine Waters. We'll let her take it out at the end. Listen in. You know, uh, in closing, let me just say that I don't understand why the pride and the patriotism does not guide us and how we see the evolving technology and new systems in the world. 
That includes, of course, um, CBDCs and um, you know everything else that we're confronted with, that we have to make decisions. Cryptocurrency, we've got to make some decisions. 140 countries, and we consider ourselves exceptional. We consider ourselves the world leaders, and we're dragging our feet. What's happening here? Why are we not concerned about our leadership? All right, so the irony here with that speech, you have to kind of watch some of our past breakdowns of these votes is that Maxine Waters has been on the other side of thwarting innovation. Now, this is bad innovation, meaning CBDCs. She was on the other side trying to thwart digital assets and all sorts of things around stable coins. So she was thwarting innovation and now ironically she's out there, oh, well, we should be following innovation now as long as it's a CBDC, a government controlled currency that we can pretty much lock down our citizens with. That's an interesting irony, I think from Maxine Waters. All right, guys, if you guys like these kind of videos, us breaking down these <laughs> horrendous videos coming out of DC, which are six hours, this was six hours long, by the way. So kudos to our team for drudging through all, all of these clips and all these videos, but to pull out where it stands today and also where the potential of the future stands around regulation, this is a very important topic. So make sure and stay tuned. If you're not in our diamond circle, get in now. It's very easy and it's free. All you have to do is click the link down below and uh, jump in. It's another way you're gonna get additional content. We do another podcast over there, additional content that I drop over there only in the diamond circle. And if you wanna catch me out there on Twitter or X, it's at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.